Testing one, two, three. Testing one, two, three. Testing one, two, three. Testing one, two, three. All right. Welcome. This is M Dog from M Dog Gaming. And first, a quick channel update, and then we're going to get into some dead cells. Uh, just it's a combination of being busy and, and honestly just being uh, into other things. Have not been able to make as many videos as I typically like to do. Um, we're going to try to get back on track at least a little bit. I don't know if we'll get back up to the same amount of content that we had kind of gotten into uh, the rhythm of, but um, at least uh, one or two videos a week is my goal to start start back up with. We've been streaming a good amount, but we've uh, I've been playing a lot of the MLB The Show and just other stuff that really aren't that um, appropriate to, to make the type of videos that we usually make for our YouTube channel. So we're going to have to be intentional about it. Today, we're going to start off with Dead Cells. I believe Motion Twin... If I'm not mistaken, is the name of the um, is the name of the developer of Dead Cells. This came out. You've probably seen it back in March, and um, it's a roguelite, like so many games that have come out recently. This category of games certainly has had a uh, a lot of growth lately. This one brings back, uh, as as many have described it, it's, it's going to remind you of Rogue Legacy, and uh, also obviously lots of DNA being drawn from something like the old Castlevania games. So let's jump right in. I, I actually did make a video about Dead Cells when it first came out, or actually when I first played it. I'm um, just much more familiar with it now. And so I wanted to come back to it as one of the videos we're gonna feature this week, uh, just cause I wanna highlight as much attention to it as possible. And what we're gonna do is we're just gonna continue the run we're on. I don't even remember where we left off last time, and then we will finish up and just kind of talk about the game as we go a little bit. Uh, we're also, by the way, streaming at MDog Gaming, and that's at Twitch TV, so um, please come join us anytime. One of the cool things about this game is your ability to get new weapons, skills. You see this screen, the pause screen shows the current weapons you have. You can swap which order they're in and the current skills you have. We have one of two skills. Right now we've got Grenade 2, but we have, for weapons, we've got the Rapier 2 and Bow and Infant Arrows 1. Uh, but as you go along and, and play the game, you have opportunities to get new skills. The other thing you, uh, you are constantly doing is building up either your health, your strength, and your strength, of course, impacts how much damage your weapons do, or your, I think they call it, do they call it skills or utility? It basically makes your skills more powerful. So um, that is what the main ways that you're building up your character. Now there's all types of other things that you're doing in between runs. So when you die and if you play like I do, you will die a lot. Um, you will have the opportunity to carry, o carry over some of your progress to your next run. I think the things for me that just really make this game stand out is they just, they got the controls right. Um, yes, I love the, the uh, components of a roguelite where you feel like you are able to, even if you're not very good at the game, you're still able to make progress. You just might make progress at a much slower rate than someone else, but you still feel like there's a carrot and a stick and you are participating. So that is something I really like about this and similar games to this. Again, uh, it's just the fact that the controls are so fluid, the weapons and uh, abilities in the game are so fun to use to me that's what kind of makes this one stand out a little bit above many of the other ones that are out there so we're gonna go along here again we'll just kind of finish this run up as far as we get and we'll kind of talk about especially as we get to the sort of in-between levels if we make it that far kind of talk about how you are able to progress and level things up. I should mention this is in early access, although this is not your average early access game. Um, this game is way more polished and developed than many early access games are. So um, don't let the early access label scare you away necessarily if it typically does scare you away. So we have a chance to upgrade here. We've got plenty of gold. Uh, let's look and see what we've got here. The Flammable Sword 2 I really like the rapier. I've been, ever since I unlocked it, I've been playing with it a lot when I've had the chance to. So we're not going to get that. I will take the knife storm, though. Um, 
actually trying to decide how if I'm going to switch these up. So there's a, a logic in my brain, though it's hard to describe on where I put my skills. And I think we will keep it like this. Um, so now we do have two skills available, which will be helpful. And you can put uh, the same skill on both slots. So if you find a skill you really like and you get an opportunity to get, get it on both skill slots, you can do that. Hey, Thea, welcome to the channel. It's good to see you again. Hope you're doing well today. All right, so this is where you have the opportunity to choose what you want to upgrade. Sometimes these upgrades are just automatic, whatever you find, but sometimes you get the choice. Our health is already at a decent place for this early in the, in the game or the run. Um, so I'm tempted to go with strength. We are using the rapier and uh, I'm trying to get more comfortable using it. So we'll make our, our rapier stronger. Ooh, that was not a good toss there. All right, so let's see what we can get into here. The thing about the rapier is you get a damage to bonus when you roll. So, oh, I should have gone the other way with that, actually. Um, so when you roll, you will do increased damage. All right, phaser is pretty cool, although I don't know if I want to take it over what we've got. I do like the phaser, though. That will teleport you right behind an enemy, and you will then... do increased damage against that enemy. I don't know why I'm unable to hit that. It's just like, I think it's trying to talk and play at the same time. Especially with this game, I am not used to doing used to doing that. And Thea, we're gonna sort of make a quick video here for YouTube featuring Dead Cells, and then I will still be streaming past that. So if I'm not as respons responsive as normal, I apologize. All right. So these guys teleport. It's actually best not to run from them. They end up doing more damage to you if you allow them to phase in at you. All right, so there's also another thing about this game is they've got these symbols, these runes, and different things will drop. A lot of times it's just gold, the currency you use, but sometimes you will get upgrades and that kind of stuff. Um, these, these gates are timed. So there's an incentive Especially once you've made some progress, there's an incentive to do some speed runs through these levels, and then you can go get the, uh, the extra rewards behind the time gates. Because of course your tendency in a game like this is to want to not go too fast so that you conserve as much health and sort of think through what you're about to do as much as possible. All right, let's see what's down over here. Hmm. And although the levels are randomized to a degree, you will certainly... I'm talking about misplaying something. Holy cow. You will certainly start to see... You'll get a rhythm. We're going to keep the rapier for now. Again, I'm trying to get better at using the rapier. You'll see a rhythm in the level design. You'll certainly recognize, okay, I know which hallway I'm in. Even if it's not set up the exact same way there are consistencies with what you're going to find down different paths in each level Oof. all right so we're going to use one of our health potions i think we're up to health potion four which means we can uh, use the health potion up to four times when you first start out you have to unlock it the health potion just to be able to use it once and then and there was not a, so that's unusual. Normally when you go down this far, there is something that transports you back to the top without having to retrace all your steps. And we'll see how far this, how long this run takes. If, if we make it kind of to the next level or so, we may just wrap up the video after this one run, but I will make sure to take a good look at the unlocks between levels. So you can see that just in case you haven't. We want to focus on him first up. So those zombie things are just the very first enemy you face. Very basic, but even that being the case, I still will sometimes roll too soon or uh, take a lot of damage from them when I really shouldn't. One nice thing about the basic grenade is that 
it does have such a short cooldown. All your skills have different cooldowns, but it's got such a short cooldown you can use it pr pretty frequently. All right, I don't think we're gonna use the Frost Blast. Okay, so now we will teleport back to the top here and continue on. There really should just be one more area here. Yep, whenever you get to this vine, you know that you're in the final push of this part of the, this level. Mm, gotta get out of there. Things get pretty chaotic at times. Which is often the time, I, at least I find, that I, that I am, uh, am dying when there's multiple enemies so my brain can't quite think about where all the attacks are going to be coming from. I like the skills that I have in this run, both the knife storm and the grenade. However, I also find it, we don't really have any kind of CC or way to lock enemies down. And, and I typically have better runs when I've got something like that. All right. So now we're transitioning from one level to the next. And this is, this is what I've been talking about. Um, Many of the enemies that you kill will drop what's, I guess, called cells. They're indicated by the blue symbol on the lower left-hand side, which you actually can't see because my uh, ugly mug is in the way. But we have 33 cells and 4,700 gold. Let's see if we can do some... Um, see if we can do some trickery here. Let's do a momentary momentary change here all right so if you can see now in the lower left hand side oh you still can't see it that good because of my frame anyway there's a blue thing that has this, how many cells you have and then of course your gold and then you see a better picture of both the health pot the type of amulet i have first is the amulet then the health pot and then your two weapons and then your two skills so that's kind of the line in which it goes all right let's move Move me back down. Oh, it's going to be maddening to center that again. So we're just going to have to be uncentered for the rest of this. Um, all right. And now what we want to do is talk to this guy. As you see, we have 33 cells left. This is really the heart of the heart in which um, how the game allows you to unlock things so that you are getting more powerful run by run. So you can see in all of these things, we've had to certain to save up a certain amount of cells and then turn them in. The last thing we want to do is unlock Healing Potion 4. So we're actually at 3 right now. Healing Potion 4 will allow us to use a Healing Potion 4 times instead of just 3 per run. And so we're going to do that. But we also could put cells into these other things to make certain weapons stronger, uh, to unlock some weapons for the first time. You can see I haven't, I haven't been big on using shields, which is probably something I should get better at. But because um, some of these shields aren't even unlocked on my playthrough here. Uh, this, the meat grinder, we haven't unlocked that yet. If we put 20 cells into that, it would be unlocked. That means we would now be able to find that out in the world as a possible uh, skill that we could use. Um, another thing we haven't increased is damage buffer. Uh, that's probably, probably something that would be worth doing. However, since we have 33 is the perfect amount, we're going to go ahead and invest them into health pot four. So that means for the rest of, um, in, unless I deleted the save, we're going to have access to healing potion four. We now have four charges in our flask. We don't have any cells left, so that's all we can do. The other thing that happens in between levels is you go here, you get to use this, and it refills your health as well as your, uh, your health pot. So you get to kind of, between levels, you get to upgrade things, which will be saved for all time, and then uh, get a refill on your health and, and health potions. All right, so now we're in the ramparts. This is kind of, um, I won't say that I always die on the ramparts, but that it, I certainly often die on, as you can see, the damage that we take is starting to go up. Um, it does get a little harder, at least for me here on the ramparts. Nothing in there. And then past this, there is, there's a boss and then there's another level past it. And I've never been past the level that's after the boss, if that makes sense. 
So I, I don't even know how much more of the game there is. I think there's probably a good bit from what I've seen, but I don't know that for sure. There's also different paths. You can go down into the sewers. So there's different paths you can take starting at the first level. All right, I don't think we've got anything else. So we'll teleport back to the top here. And we will continue. All right, this is another type of rune. The ones that are below you, instead of, instead of hitting them, you actually just use those runes and then you unlock a secret area. I don't ever do well in these. So in these, it's basically, you can only take damage one time and you're out. So you try to make it through here, through here without taking damage. Oh, that was nerve wracking. Because if you take damage just once, the challenge is over. You take the damage and then you get teleported back to the... That was close. Let's see which way he goes. All right. Uh-oh. Yeah, I shouldn't have done that. I rolled past one arrow, but got hit by the last one. All right, so that's what the secret areas are like. I don't think we went down here, correct? That's correct. All right, let's go ahead and use one of our health pots. I have more trouble with those guys with shields, especially if there's multiple enemies and they're one of the... Okay, this is one of the timed gates. There's nothing we can do down here. All right. Keep making progress here. All right. This is going to give us more health. So again, an upgrade that you sometimes find as you're going through the game. Uh-oh. Now, one thing I do not use very much is my secondary weapon, which right now is a bow. For whatever reason, it's just been... Okay, we're in some trouble here. That's what often happens to me. Panic sets in, I can't figure out how to get out of it, and then that's it. So that's the end. When you die, you're dead. And you start back over here in the prisoner's cells. Your character, for some reason, does not have a head, and then once you do get a head, it's glowing. There's really not a story to the game yet, at least that you can really tell. Um, I don't know if that will be introduced later or if it will just m remain mysterious. Because of some of the unlocks I've, I've gotten to this point, I do get to carry over about 85% of my gold. Not about, I think it's exact. 85% of my gold. I also get a random weapon at the beginning of the next run. So again, there are things that you can unlock that will benefit you run to run. This guy you can talk to and apparently he's going to show you game stats. Um, but so far he doesn't. Welcome, MD. Uh, so anyway, that is Dead Cells. And uh, if you're here for the stream, feel free to hang out. I'm just going to wrap up what we've been doing here in the YouTube video. And to summarize, I would just say I've had, as, I've had so much fun with this game. I'm not very good at these types of games, but it doesn't stop me from enjoying them. It, it's just, I think it's the, prog the progression. And you can progress it, you know, whatever whatever rate you can progress and um, for some people that's going to be much faster for me it's uh, probably a below average pace but it doesn't stop me from really liking the game and, and it has been one of my favorites of recent memory so if you haven't checked out dead cells i would encourage you to especially if you're into this type of game if you like me enjoyed rogue legacy or many of the other roguelites that have come since then um, some of them i like okay rogue legacy dead cells or two that i've liked uh, an exceptional amount. So as always, thanks for watching and we will try to get a few more videos up here this week. Um, but this will wrap this one up on dead cells. Thanks so much. 
Yes, indeed, that was so wrong. 